Today I'm going to show off 5 techniques in order to create racing graphics and logos in Adobe Illustrator. What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and I'm a graphic designer and visual artist. In this video, I'm going to show off a couple of techniques that I use often when it comes to designing racing graphics. These graphics are usually found on motocross jerseys, sticker packs, racing cars and motors. And in my case, I usually design them when I do merchandise for artists. So without any further ado, let's dive straight into the video. The first technique that I'm going to be using is outlining with the offset path. Let's make some text. The font that I'm using here is called Drug White Heavy Italic. So one thing I see a lot of people doing is when they want to add an outline in Illustrator is they go to here and let's make a red overlay. And once we start making the stroke larger, you'll see that it starts eating away at the text. And that's something that we don't want. The thing is, of course, if you click on stroke, you can always click on align stroke and align it to the outside. But on text objects, that doesn't really work. What you should be doing then is right click, create outlines and go to stroke and then do it like this. And the thing is, there's actually a method that I prefer. Uh, so let's, let's remove the outline for now. I'm going to select my text, go to object, compound path, make. Now our text doesn't have any fill. So let's swap back to the fill and we'll make this black again. So what I like to do is go to object, offset path. We can now change this either miter or round. So let's go with miter since it has hard edges. Let's do an outline of maybe 15 pixels. And as you can see, we now do have an outline file. We can change this color to red. But the thing is, it now has a fill. And if we take a look in our layer menu here, you can see that there are two compound paths now. So these are separate objects. The reason I prefer this over a stroke in Illustrator is because you have a little bit more control over what you want to do with this. Let's say that you want to have like this fake 3D effect. What you can do is basically move these a little bit to the side and down. And now if we want to make this white, for example, you'll see that there's like a fake shadow happening. Another thing is because these are now both compound paths, as I can easily select them, go to the pathfinder and click on minus front to create an outline font. And we can take this a little bit further even if we want to. So let's go back to the first compound path that we made. And let's go back to object path offset path and we'll now use an offset of three pixels and let's use the pathfinder to punch out the offset path uh, with three pixels out of the offset path of 15 pixels so we now simply have two of these and as you can see the one in the back on its own already looks pretty sick but we can also just simply use this one as well with a transparent background if we want to and of course it can also give us the freedom to delete parts on the inside so we can also delete these parts if we want to and this also gives you another effect as you can see right here for now i'm gonna leave it at this i actually like this so let's group these together and those were the first two techniques the offset path and the pathfinder. So next I want to show you something that I've seen a lot in racing logos and I'm going to show you a quick shortcut on how to create lines with the same slant as the text. So again, let's grab another font this time, a slant one. Let's go with color black. So we'll right click, create outlines. And something that I see often is what people want to do is grab a rectangle here and they want to slant it. Let's try this with the free transform tool but they don't really have a method in order to create the exact same angle as the letter D here. And I'm going to show you a method on how, and then we're going to make a racing logo out of this. So what you want to do is grab your pen tool, lock the text that you want to use it on. We're going to find the anchor on the bottom left here, and we're going to move that onto the next anchor on the top of the letter D. And now we want to basically move this to the left. Also, if you want to, you can also check if there's a certain spacing in between. For example, the spacing between the letter I and the letter N. You want to grab the rectangle tool and make a rectangle between those two points. I'm going to color it green so you can see uh, that this is the exact distance between these two letters. And we can use it for ourselves here as well. So we'll move this towards the point here of the letter D and we'll just move this line towards there as well. So now the spacing in between this line and the DL racing is the same. Let's delete this one. I'm going to grab the green rectangle here and make it blue for a second. And what I'm going to do now is grab the exact width of this character, which is this. And I'm just going to move this towards here. Now, next what I'm going to do is grab this line here that we just made with the pen tool and hold alt or option and drag it over here so that it aligns with the width of that rectangle down here. 
we can delete that now we're going to select both of the bottom points with the direct selection tool and i'm going to press ctrl or command j on our keyboard i'm going to do the same with the top ones here Control or command J. And now we have a path that's exactly the same with the letter I here. Of course, you could have also done that, but if there wasn't an I in your text, uh, you could have done this this way. So the next thing we're gonna use is a blend. So what we wanna do first is hold other option and click and drag on the rectangle that we just made. Okay, so if we wanna grab half of this or 10% of this or whatever, what you wanna do is grab this rectangle here based on the anchor points. Then we're gonna click on the properties tab here align it to the left here and then we just want to simply grab the width and type out slash let's do slash four so we divide it by four next we want to grab the direct selection tool and grab both of the right points and drag them onto that rectangle and now we can just use that guy rectangle and delete it next we want to select both of these rectangles go to object blend make and as you can see this now creates this nice fade in between these arrows here uh, next what you want to do is go to blend expand you can now move these around freely if you want to so for example if you want to have these a little bit closer together so that's a method on how to copy different angles and distances in text and copy it to other elements of your text so now let's just change this into a racing logo together with by using the techniques that we had earlier in the video so let's unlock this layer right here grab the text we'll make the text a nice green color and we'll grab all of this together we'll copy this now we're going to edit, paste in place, and we're going to change this into a compound path. And again, let's go to path, offset path. We'll do maybe five pixels here. And next we're going to select the same thing and we'll do another offset path of maybe 20 pixels. Let's see how large that is. Should be good. I will change the middle one to white and then the outer one to black maybe. Uh, looking at this, this is a little bit too much. So we'll just grab the green one again and with offset path let's try 10 it's a little bit better i think uh, we can still select the middle one here move this one up so that it actually makes sense and even what we can do is grab a nice offset path of one pixel and make that black so there's a nice outline around the green as well and perhaps we can even use a gradient for this if we want to so let's fill this green with a gradient change the angle to 90 degrees we'll have a nice minty racing logo uh, one thing to note here though is what I wanted to do first actually uh, I kind of forgot about this is I want to delete this compound path and I want to grab the text here so the original two layers the black ones let's move those up so we have these stripes and we have the text itself so let's grab the text here uh, we'll put that to the top and we'll change that to the gradient so maybe if we change around this gradient a little bit you'll see that there's a slight difference in between those to make it look like these aren't like the letters I or something like that so something like this is actually pretty okay, I think. Let's group all of this together and we'll have our second graphic. Next up, we're gonna do a slightly different one. Let's start out with an ellipse. Uh, we'll make this ellipse orange. And I want you guys in the comments to guess what this logo actually is because this is based on a real life logo. You've probably seen it around. And I'm curious if you can see what logo this is. Let me know down in the comments. Next, we're gonna grab a rectangle and from the center of our circle we'll just place it right here and we'll change the fill to white we'll grab text here we'll type out dlm and the font that we've used for this one is called active grotesque extended black we'll scale this properly so that it aligns nicely with our rectangle here we can outline this font immediately and the rectangle here let's soften these edges up by rounding them off and we can also scale them in a little bit so that is not too far away from the text and it actually still fits in kind of within the circle so the next thing i want to show you in illustrator is actually a warp effect so select your rectangle you can also select the text if you want to we're going to effect warp bulge and as you can see this creates a bulge in the horizontal axis you can also do it on a vertical axis but for now we'll do a 25 percent bulge on the horizontal axis and we'll click ok and now if we want to outline this uh, you can go to object expand appearance the font of this will make dark blue let's select the rectangle and the circle here and once more we're going to copy this paste it in place by going to edit paste in place next we'll unite these using the pathfinder and we're going to use the same technique that we've used a couple of times in this video so far so we'll go to object path offset path we'll do maybe three pixels this time and we'll do that once again object path offset path three pixels so in our layer menu the first one that we can simply delete 
that was just to create a guide and then we'll select the other ones and we'll just click on minus front and now we want to change this color let's click the eyedropper tool here and we'll click on the blue from the text here and as you can see we've now created that logo successfully so that's a way that you can use warps in your racing logos so let's group these together and we'll place them right in so before we move on to the last one, I want to ask you something. Would you like to get access to all of the project files and Illustrator, Photoshop files, anything that I made in my tutorials, which is over 100 files, by the way? You actually can by becoming a Patreon member of mine. Thanks to my Patreon members, I'm able to give you guys free tutorial videos every single week. I have been able to do that for almost four years at this point, or nearly reaching 500 videos. That's an incredible feat, I think, and I wouldn't be able to do that without the help of all of my Patreons. So I wanna take this time to give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon members, whether you were a Patreon member back in the day or if you are one right now. You can imagine that creating these videos takes a lot of time and I wouldn't be able to have the time if I was forced to get a day job next to Dread Labs. So thanks to my patrons, I'm able to give you guys free videos every single week. However, all of my patrons get a lot of perks in return. Besides getting access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials, which is over 100 Photoshop files and over 70 Illustrator files, they'll also get access to all of my past live streams where you can see my full design process, a permanent 15% discount in my asset web store where I sell vector graphics, textures, mockups and more, and an exclusive role in the Dreadlabs Discord community server where over 3000 designers come together and show off their designs, ask for feedback, ask and answer questions, and talk about life as a creative in general. There's also a slightly more expensive tier that gives you access to exclusive tutorials such as how to start your own clothing brand, how to make death metal logos from scratch, and much more. You'll also get access to an additional 100 project files from my Creatober series, most of which are poster designs. So if this is all something you're interested in, there's a link down below in the description that will lead you to my Patreon channel. Of course, I understand that not everyone has the budget to support Dreadlabs in that way. You can also just subscribe for a month and unsubscribe immediately. This gives you a month worth of access to my Patreon channel and you'll be able to download all of my files if you want to. However, this does mean that you won't get access to any future project files and new ones are added every single month. If you do not have any budget at all to support Dreadlabs in that way, of course, it's completely fine. But if you still want to do something, you can leave a comment and a like on this video to boost this video in the algorithm. If you aren't subscribed already, consider doing that because new videos are coming your way every single week. A lot of my subscribers don't seem to see my new videos once they're uploaded, so clicking on that bell button actually makes a difference as well. This way you'll never miss out on any future tutorials on my channel. So once again, a huge shout out to all of my Patreon members. Thank you so much, because without you, there wouldn't be a Dreadlabs. Without any further ado, let's continue into the final technique. So the last effect that I want to show you is related to stars. You usually see a lot of stars on these racing graphics, especially if they're Y2K inspired. So let's start straight off with a magenta star because we haven't really used that color yet so let's start out with a star let's hold shift to make it stand upright and if we hold old while dragging or option if you're on a mac you'll be able to see that it's a perfect star there we have it if we want to create an outline for this let's do that straight away so we'll go to path offset path three pixels and we'll make it black if we want to we can also soften this up a little bit to make this a little bit more y2k inspired i think uh, for now i prefer to have it this way and you probably also should soften those edges up before you use the offset path as you could see just now anyways let's group them together by pressing ctrl or command g on our keyboard while they are selected next we're going to go to effect distort and transform this is an often overlooked filter but it's going to actually create some really interesting effects once you started knowing what it does so the cool thing is uh if you just press in maybe like 80 percent in here it will just scale your design to 80%. And that's not really what we're looking for at this point. And you can also just move this to the right, for example. Let's move it to the right for 50 pixels, maybe. Let's do 250. The cool thing is once we started adding copies. So the more copies we put in, as you can see, there's a lot of options that you can use in here. For example, you can also change wherever the stars are going coming from. In our case, it's from the middle, but you can also make sure that the aligning is from any other corner of your design. Another pretty cool one is the rotation. As you can see here, we can now instantly make this nice swirl by rotating each star 30 degrees. Once you change the anchor point again, as you can see, the positioning will also really change a lot. Basically, it's super easy to tweak and uh, you can also change some other effects like reflect them, put them in a random order. You can also scale the strokes and effects. So maybe in this case, the stroke actually works the best if you want to keep the stroke size the same on each one. But if we click OK now, 
Uh, we can basically move this around, also start rotating. But as you can see, the effect stays the same here. So if you actually want to move these or rotate the whole thing around, you're going to go to Object, Expand Appearance. And now you basically have six of these stars ready to go like that. So yeah, the transform filter is actually a really powerful tool and I highly recommend you start experimenting with them. So there you have it guys, a couple of techniques that I use in order to create racing graphics in Adobe Illustrator. I hope this video was useful to you. If so, let me know down in the comments. Also, if you guessed which logo I redesigned halfway through, let me know down in the comments as well. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, also leave them down in the comments or send me a message on Instagram or Discord. And if you want to get access to all of the project files from my tutorials, including this one, you can become a Patreon member of mine through the link down in the description. With all of that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I hopefully see you guys in the next video.